Hello, it is Hannah Mystic, and today I'm going to be talking about The Tale as Old as Time, movie as old as, like, two weeks, Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast, the 1991 original, is my favorite movie, so I was really, really excited for this movie to come out. Maybe a little nervous, but not too nervous. First, I want to talk about the scenery. From the first scene, I want to know how much of the village they built, where it was, if that was a real existing place, or if they built it just for the movie. It was just exactly as I imagined, and the colors were breathtaking. And she goes on the mountains, and she's singing about the adventure she wants, and you just see on and on and on. Oh, it's so pretty! They did Gaston's Tavern so well. The Beast's Castle, the fact that the Beast's Castle is like also connected to the curse and that it crumbles when like parts of the petals fall and then when the enchantment's broken it's repaired. I thought that was a really cool element because why wouldn't the curse affect the castle if it affects all of its inhabitants? And of course, the scene I was most looking forward to, the library, did not disappoint. Next I want to talk about the Beast himself. The Beast was the single most expressive character in the whole movie, actors included. They probably did facial motion capture on him and oh wow. He was so dynamic. It did such a good job with showing his humanity underneath everything and showing how much he cares. You could tell how Belle would fall in love with him. It was really beautiful. I think Emma Watson did a fantastic job as Belle. I was so excited when she was picked for the role because she's a great person, she's a great actress, she's beautiful. She played the character very quiet, which I liked, and very stubborn and poised. She was really cool. I thought her singing voice was pretty nice. She seemed a little auto-tuned in places, I don't know about that, but it all worked out okay. And I can't, I was gonna do the characters first, but I have to jump to this. The dress! <gasps> it was just such a dream come true to see Belle's yellow dress in live action. They made some changes to it, but it was so beautiful. There was one scene, like my favorite one second of the whole movie, it just showed the bottom of the dress like the hemline, like dragging across the floor, and <laughs> I just love the dress so much. Back to talking about characters, I thought Gaston was done really freaking well. And I think Gaston's an interesting character to have in a movie right now. I mean, they picked a good time to bring back Beauty and the Beast because you can't really avoid hearing about tragedy and madness in the world right now, and a lot of it is based on mob mentality. Then LeFou. I thought Josh Gad was such a good choice for LeFou. He was so small and round and cute, and I love that they gave LeFou a real story arc. This is a little bit of a spoiler. The fact that Gaston's evil extended to the man who thought he was Gaston's best friend, and then the villain's sidekick himself switched sides. He rescued Mrs. Potts. That was a beautiful addition to the story, and I think it really adds to the message of the story of people changing and finding the goodness in them. There was some controversy when Disney announced that they were going to have a gay character in the movie. I honestly thought it would be like a bigger deal than it was. It was really just like one little hint at the end, but I'm still super happy that they put it in. It's a movie about outcasts and it fits really nicely. I also want to talk about Mrs. Potts. I love Emma Thompson. She is the perfect pick. She carries out the Angela Lansbury tradition of it. I don't know if they're friends. I bet they are. She played such a motherly character. You could hear it in every single inflection of her voice. And also, Audra McDonald just killing it at the end with those high notes. It was a treat for the ears. It really was. So that's all the characters I want to go specifically into. I thought all the household objects were so well animated and designed. They looked so fluid. They were so cute. They had good faces. Just good job animators. <laughs> Okay, now I want to move on to talking about some songs. First of all, Be Our Guest. Oh wow! It was a spectacle. They animated so many different things. It was like a live action Fantasia scene. Also, the opening song, Bell, was just it was so nice. It was so excited to see it in live action. It also made me realize, this is the weird part about Beauty and the Beast, she can't be the only person in that crowd who reads. Like, that can't make her that weird. Even if it does, is she like the only person in this village with a weird hobby? 
tomorrow, if Mark the Milkman decides he wants to learn to, like, do yo-yo or something, is the entire village again gonna make a whole musical number about how weird he is? Or is it just, like, Belle? I don't know. They also addressed a bunch of other questions I've always had about Beauty and the Beast that I was so happy that other people were wondering and decided to put in the, I guess, Beauty and the Beast canon. One of the biggest things I've always wondered is, yo, where are the parents? So I've always wondered this about the Beast because when everyone was cursed, his parents weren't there. When this lady knocked at the door, his parents weren't there. The movie put that in context. They explained his parental backstory. The whole story about his mother dying young and leaving him was a really nice addition because that gave him this really deep emotional connection with Belle who had the same experience. They shared something that few people know the true pain of. They also gave an answer to what happened to Belle's mother, which was a really sad and touching scene. I liked that it put the movie in a historical context. So now we know that Beauty and the Beast is probably taking place during the French Enlightenment and the plague was like just on its way out. I think it would take place around the early 1700s. That leads me to my next question about the movie, which has to do with the one thing I truly detested about this. So when the Beast and Gaston are facing off in this final battle and there's a lot of tension, Gaston just pulls out a freaking gun! What?! <laughs> Not even like a bayonet rifle type of thing, just like a police shotgun! It's really confusing because I don't think that would have been invented yet. It looked out of place, it was disturbing, it was harsh, and it also just didn't feel historically accurate. Another one of the major questions I've always had about this movie also regards Gaston. So this witch enchantress lady comes to the Beast Castle in disguise and to teach him a lesson for judging her based on her appearance, she turns him into a beast and curses his whole castle. Why wouldn't she come for Gaston? He's the one who said, Belle's the prettiest, that makes her the best. He seems like the most judgmental material guy in the whole village. However, the new movie does give us some angle on the Beast's vanity, showing him at the beginning throwing a super fancy, wasteful party, getting all dressed up, and being super over the top, and so he deserved it too. It was probably just a coin flip for this enchantress. Speaking of the Beast, if he was raised a prince, shouldn't he remember how to use a spoon? I mean, maybe he doesn't like to, but if Belle's there and they're having a fancy dinner, I think he could figure out how to use a spoon. There's probably a talking, living spoon that could just feed him. Why isn't he using a spoon? Also regarding the Beast, a question I used to have a lot more than I have now. Why does the Beast stay so isolated? The only way to break the spell is for he and someone else to fall in love. Why does he just lock himself in the castle? If I was the Beast, I would dress up in my fancy outfit, go into the village, flaunt how much money I have, use some killer pickup lines, get someone to fall in love with me, and save my whole castle. But now that I'm older, I have a lot more perspective on this, and I can almost say that I've seen people do this. I can almost say that I've done this. I mean, we all know people who complain about how they hate the way they look, or how they don't have as many friends as they want, or how they want someone to love them, instead of working on themselves and finding new activities and going out into the world, they take this negativity and they just isolate themselves further. People go through it because of depression, people go through it because they've been through things in their lives. The Beast shouldn't have isolated himself, but I can understand why he did, and I think a lot of people can. And that's just part of what makes this movie so emotionally important. A lot of people relate to Belle and a lot of people relate to the Beast. That feeling of having something that makes you different but you know there's more inside of you and wanting to find someone else who understands that. All in all, it's a really important movie and I am so glad Disney chose to release it again and expose new people to it and let us experience it again in a new way. That was it for this talk about the 2017 Beauty and the Beast. This is a new channel. There is going to be so much fun stuff happening here. I'm gonna talk about every single Disney movie in order, starting from Snow White and going up to, right now, Moana, but there'll probably be more by then. I'm gonna have some original music and some talking about my views. It'll be a real good time, so I highly recommend you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you leave a comment, I'd be happy to talk about the movie with you. Have a great day. Love yourself.
Bye, guys.